Hello there, I'm Jim, and in this series of videos, I'm going to try and see if I can stick these sorts of labels onto these sorts of jars. Hi there, and welcome to The Cove. Right, I want to start this video by explaining the point of making the videos and what I'm trying to do. I want to learn some new skills and I want to also solve some problems. And I thought if they, if I put those learning processes online as I'm going along, I can get a lot more input from other members of the community out there, the maker community and whatever. And you can hopefully help me sort of solve these problems as I go along. Now, the problem I'm trying to achieve in this instance is I want to learn to stick labels onto jars like this. Now, that seems simple, but it's not. The reason it's not is because at the moment we do it by hand and we're doing thousands a month. Now, we're a small artisan chutney and jam producer and there aren't machines that cater for businesses our sort of size. If we were a big, um, like a big conglomerate or whatever, and we'd have big production lines, there's loads of machines out there that literally spit jars in one end, spit them outside the other end with labels on. But with us, we're only doing batches of 60 or 70 per, per batch, and we have to label the whole things by hand. So it's a bit of a, bit of a faff. And um, I thought this was a brilliant opportunity for me to learn some new skills and document the whole thing and get sort of external inputs. And uh, that's, that's it, really. That's what I'm trying to achieve. I just wanted to show you what the labels sort of look like. They're quite simple, on a roll, sticky labels, they come like this, and um, yeah, that's my challenge, is to get those onto those. So hopefully you guys can help me, and hopefully through me learning these sorts of skills, you'll find something interesting, you may be able to contribute, and um, we'll see where we go from here. So, what I'm trying to achieve in this is, like I say, to build an end result, but also it's the learning the skills that I'm interested in as well. And the skills I feel I'm gonna to need to learn is 3D printing. I know nothing about 3D printing at all. I've done a minute thing with Tinkercad a few times and similar, where I've actually um, sent things off to 3D hubs and they've printed it for me, but I've never printed anything myself. So I want to concentrate on a new 3D printer, which I want to buy as part of this project. So I'll probably actually do, that be one of my videos, is actually building a 3D printer, figuring it all out how it works. And the printer I've got in mind at the moment is the version two of the Ender 3, because it looks a good printer. It's not too expensive, it's in my budget, and I can, if, it's no, if it doesn't quite do what I want it to do, it's no big deal. So that's my first thing, is 3D printing. But with 3D printing, I've then got a problem that I need to learn design skills and Tinkercad or whatever it is and those sorts of things aren't, just aren't good enough. So I've got to start getting involved in F Fusion 360. Now I'm probably, I know that Bob Claggett from I Like To Make Stuff has got a video or a tutorial pack on how to learn Fusion 360. So I might get involved in that and sort of see how I go along with that. So 3D printing, Fusion 360, next thing I need to learn is electronics. So I'm gonna, at the end of this video, I'm gonna explain to you what I've done with Arduino, and I'm learning that as I go along. So the first stage of the thing is gonna be the controller, which is some sort of Arduino, Uno, or Nano, and then some stepper motors and that kind of thing. So they're the skill sets I'm trying to achieve, and they're the ones I'm gonna learn. And I really want you guys to like and subscribe and sort of help me as I go along to see what I'm doing right, see what I'm doing wrong, and um, see if it actually can be of use to you, but as for all of us, actually some sort of learning journey. So let's see how we go from there. So how am I actually gonna build this device? The answer is I don't know yet. And I have tried before. Back in the day, I actually built a couple, this one here, look, which was built out of plywood and it was inspired by Izzy Swan because he made all the machines out of plywood. And uh, it was all right, but it, it, was, it was a faff really and it was more aggro than it was really worth. 
But let me explain what I'm trying to achieve and how it's going to achieve. If the jars span like that, it would be very easy to have some sort of mechanism that rolls the label on. That's what I'm sort of trying to achieve because we use sort of things like this, which you literally pull and the label just pops out. Happy days. That is great and that's how we get them out at the moment. But the problem with our labels is they come this way around, which means to get them onto a jar, they've got to go on the top, down. So they've literally got to be spat out on the top and then rolled around both sides. That is a problem and that is a bit of an issue. So my answer, I think, is some, so, some way that we have a separate motor which is pulling the, the material down and spitting the label out. And then some sort of servo that pushes both down either side to actually sort of make it stick on it. That's what I'm trying to achieve. There's gonna be some sort of fans, I think, as well, to blow air up, otherwise the label will naturally curve, stick to the jar, bad, bad juju. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Let's see how we can do it. And this is the technology and the kit that I've learned to use so far, and I think I'm gonna be using to actually build this device. If you've got any questions or any suggestions or think you're going in the wrong direction, please put in the comments and let me know. Okay. So we're over at the workbench now, and I just wanted to go through some of the kit that I'm sort of learned to use over the last couple of weeks that I think will be enough technology and enough brains to actually make a label machine work. So a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about now you're probably way ahead of me and it's just basic electronics to you, but it's new to me and uh, hopefully it'll be useful to some of you guys out there. So what we're gonna start with is one of these. Now this is an Arduino Uno. It's a really cool piece of kit. Very, very simple to use, very simple to program and they can do loads of stuff. When I say they're simple to program, they're simple to get going with. Um, because I've pretty much learned what I'm trying to achieve quite quickly. Now, but they can do loads, way, way cleverer than I know how to begin, even begin to think of. So what they do, there's a microprocessor in there somewhere that ostensibly spins round and round and round, waiting for input to happen. So it's just on a loop. Now what that does, those inputs could be switches or sensors or God knows what, and then it'll do something with those inputs, if that makes sense. So all we do, for our, our purposes, we can have on this side over here, for example, we can have some switches. So we'll have a switch that is triggered when the jar is in, inserted into the machine. That then in, in turn will start motors or servos, and stuff that we needed to achieve. So it's really quite simple. And the way you actually program these, I'll stick it on the screen in a bit, but really, or maybe we'll go through it properly in the next video, if that makes more sense. But what the way it works, this goes into a USB adapter. You install a IDE, which is like an editing client, onto your computer, write your code, upload it straight into here, and magic happens. It's pretty much that simple. So this is the brains of the outfit. That is gonna be controlling stepper motors. Now, these are the stepper motors we're gonna be using simply because they're the ones I've got. Now, these are called NEMA 17s. Now, I assumed that the 17 bit was actually the speed or the torque or the power. It's not actually, it's, I believe from what I've learned, it's the, the physical size of the motor or at least the physical size of this element here. So this, or some of these, these will actually be the one will pull the labels out or one will spin the jar or whatever. Now they're really simple to operate and work and what I didn't know, again I'm teaching you guys to suck eggs, but this is a stepper motor, this is not a normal motor. 
So as the name suggests, it takes steps. Now these motors do 200 steps per revolution, which is really quite cool. That means that we know that we can dial it in exactly how far that has got to turn to get one label out of the machine. So they're really precise and really easy to use. Well, I say they're easy to use. If you get the right kit and the right technology and the right advice, they're easy to use. It took me a bit of time to get that to get to that point because I'd read varying things on Google or Amazon or whatever or YouTube, and it took me a while. So basically, to drive a stepper motor, you need a stepper motor driver. Now, a stepper motor driver is one of these. Actually, it's not. This looks like a stepper motor driver, and I thought it was a stepper motor driver. And it sort of can be, but it's just not a very good one. Basically, what it is, is it is a motor driver, and it can, it can control up to four motors, if you want it to, or one stepper motor. Now, jumping about a bit here, but the way a stepper motor works, I've learned recently, is it's got two coils in it, and you need to basically talk to both coils and energize them. I think it's basically energized alternately, which means you energize one one and it which makes each click. Now, so that's how they work, and I thought this driver was the way forward. And I've seen them work, and I actually got the motors to work with it, but the motor was getting super hot and it didn't seem as precise as I was hoping for. And um, so I scrapped that in favour for something else I found. One of these. This looks pretty cool. It's got a big heat sink on it and it's brilliant. And um, actually it's not. It's the same as one of those, just looks cooler. What you really need, I found out later, is one of these. This stepper motor hit driver here is so clever and it does so many things you can energize the motor you can de-energize the motor so you can actually what that means is a stepper motor is always on waiting for the step which means it's getting hot if you don't need it but these you can say actually i don't need you at the moment cool your jets turn off for a bit so and i found really easy to use really easy to program and only a little bit of help that I found off of Google got them going instantly. But that then led me onto one of these things, which I'm really pleased with. This is a shield that fits in the top of a Arduino, and these then fit into those, if that makes sense, which means one of these little things here can control four of these, which means that can control four stepper motors. So the reason I'm now excited by that, that means that's pretty much a CNC machine right there or a 3D printer. Now I don't know much about 3D printers because I haven't got one or used one and I don't know much about CNC machines either. But I bet you that between all the stuff I just pointed out, well forgetting those, but all this stuff, we're pretty close to all the stuff you actually need for a CNC machine. But that's by the by. But that's really cut into the chase of what technology I'm going to use. There's probably going to be some screens on there as well and some buttons to do some savings and programs. But what I'm going to do over the next couple of days is build a prototype of how I want it to work. Well no, how I want the electronics to work at least. And then we'll do the next video on that and we'll see if it works and see if it makes sense. We'll go over the code that I've put together and hopefully you guys can go actually no I'm not sure I'd do it like that or yeah whatever so hopefully you're on board with what I'm trying to achieve here and what I'm doing and it's not boring and please put some likes and comments in and um, I'll see you on the next video thanks a lot